Well, again, again, even on your even on your documentary, Ronnie, uh, I said you were dealing, you were doing things that some of us just weren't willing to do, and, and yeah. the results, the results <laughs> in the pictures, the results in the physique, the results in the photographs, it, it bears that out because there's a certain type of old man muscle you had, a certain thickness yeah. that you had that you can only get from the kind of weight that you were lifting, and if we weren't yeah. lifting that kind of weight, we were never going to look like that. Yeah. Um, and I thought the same about Lee Labrada and Muhammad McAway before my time. They were, and even Frank Zane, they were good bodybuilders, but they were slight on the muscle. It was, wasn't real thicky and, and chunky type of muscle. And if somebody had that, they were going to get beat. And Lee Haney, of course, had it in spades. Um, yeah. And we thought, he, we thought he was the biggest, strongest, and you just kind of took it to another level. But the, I think the weights are what made you. You, you were just yeah. an incredibly strong, arguably the strongest bodybuilder, even over Franco Colombo. And, and Johnny Jackson that ever walked the planet, so that served you well developing. Yeah, body. yeah, I was always naturally strong. You know, I was I was doing powerlifting in in what uh, junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. So you know, and see, I was I was afraid of the power. I was afraid of the power. I I did one powerlifting show, but I, I got afraid of uh, the weights in terms of how much they were. I, I just thought. Things can happen, and I just wasn't willing to do certain things uh, yeah. poundage wise. Poundage wise, like I could squat 500 pounds for eight reps, but I never felt like trying to go for 550. I never felt like <laughs> trying to do 600. I never thought, let me let me do 600 once, because again, it's a physique show. It's an illusion, and I think yeah, when yeah. I think of illusion, I think of Labrada. I think of Muhammad McAway. These are small guys yeah, that were beating yeah. very big guys. So I didn't need to yeah. go into the. I didn't need to go into the deep end of the pool. And just to see if I could do it, I stayed over here in the shallow end and kind of just refined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was always thinking how how much I could do. Yeah. How how heavy I can go, and I can go heavier. You yeah. Know? And but I that's why do, you have the eight trophies. I, and, I can, and, and I can still do more reps too. You know. How, so how many pro shows did you win, Ronnie? I think twenty six. I think. So, so, so Giles, to give you some context, the difference in our careers, um, he, that's more shows I think that I even competed in almost as many in my entire career yep. that Ronnie won. Um, and so my whole thing, when I sat out, I knew what I wanted to be when I lifted up weights because I was introduced to it by a bodybuilder, John Brown. I knew when I fell in love with weights at 17, I wanted to be Mr. Olympia. So that was always the plan. That was always my goal. And I tried to figure out how to get there. Um, I didn't have the aspiration of challenging my weight, my lifts. I wasn't trying to squat 600. I wasn't trying to binge 500. So those were never things that I would strive for in the gym. Um, and throughout my career, trying to want to be Mr. Olympia, I pretty much only did the Olympia. So yeah, I, I yeah. went in the Olympia thir 13 times. I did three Arnold Classics and uh, two Ironman shows. So that's nothing compared to what Ronnie was doing. And he was yeah. also able to measure his, measure his pro progress because he's competing so many times. Yeah, and, slow, yep. and slowly beating these guys randomly, I'm sure probably did a lot for his confidence. Yeah, um, it did. It did. And, and so we took totally different paths, but we wound up on the same stage. And, and Ronnie's proof, like Dexter Jackson, that competing more often doesn't necessarily slow you down. Nope, sure didn't. A lot, a lot of bodybuilders feel it slows them down. For me, my business <clears throat> slowed me down because I would rather tour. I'd rather go on tour and travel the world and do my seminars and gym appearances and endorse endorsement deals than stay in the gym and train and try to ch challenge myself and beat myself up. So I, I actually preserved myself, and I was also able to see the world. Part of my whole love affair with bodybuilding was that it was global. And yeah. when the Olympia was over, I already had an itinerary almost to January. I was gone because I was like I dieted down. I didn't want to just come home and get fat, so I would yeah. make all my appearances – all the way up to the holidays, and I'd be all over the world and all over the country, and nobody could see because we didn't have social media. No, no, so no, no. No one knew where I was, and yeah. and I traveled alone. I traveled alone, but the good thing about it was there were trash can trash uh, cash transactions back in the day. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I was feeling obli I was feeling obligations for various sponsors I was ho having, but it would I could stop those chicks 
chips up so that I didn't have to compete. So from yeah. January till September, I had made enough money in the fall that I could kind of use that money to get ready for the Mr. Olympia, whereas a lot of guys were on the paper chase and they'd go in the New York Pro or the Miami Pro or Russia Pro. I mean, you did a lot of shows, Ron. I did a lot of shows. I did the tour every single year, the European yeah. tour every year. And in one year, that was seven shows in 11 days. Yeah, Seven crazy. shows in 11 days. And yeah. that's a lot of shows. Yeah, I had like people say I was afraid to compete, but how can you be afraid to compete when you're beating the best in the world every single year at the Olympia? Like, if I was going for the money, I would just go on the tour and and, and try to do it again. Yeah. But uh, I, I would rather go on tour and have the red carpet treatment and eat what I want, enjoy the country, enjoy the people, enjoy the fruit of my labor, and make cash money than stay on a diet, train every single day, and and try to compete. Competing for me wasn't the best of fun. Trying to do, trying to be Mr. Olympia was what got me out of bed. Sean, yeah. Sean, did you ever feel with the guys like Dorian Yates coming along and then Ronnie, did you ever feel pressure to maybe chase the size like some maybe some of the other guys like Jay Cutler ended up doing? Oh yeah. I mean people ten more pounds, ten more pounds. I just I didn't buy it. I didn't see where ten more pounds on me was gonna actually make me a better bodybuilder. I, I, I watched it pretty much destroy Mohammed Beniziza because in nineteen ninety when he beat Dorian, he was at his absolute best. I don't think he was ever that weight again. I mean Beniziza, I think, was like a bantam weight. But he blew himself up to 220, and he just looked like it was too much muscle for his limb. His limbs were short. He looked kind of boxy, and he actually, the heavier he got, the more midget-like he looked. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because he was so full. I, I, I don't think I could have got that much fuller than I was. So 10 pounds on me, I'm still 40 pounds away from Ronnie and Dorian. So mathematically in my head. Yeah, um, and plus you're going for the illusion, too. That's it. The illusion was something I learned from... Samir Banu, from Chris Dickerson, from Lee Labrada. And I was I was from that cloth. Like, I knew that if I got too heavy, uh, whatever got me to where I was at was going to be gone. So I, yeah. didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to even play the game. Um, some people tried to drop it in my head. Just put five pounds on. I'm thinking, five pounds where? It's probably going to go straight to my quads, which are already too big. And you really can't spot train to put that weight in certain areas. I just did what I could do without getting hurt and, and – um, and do it the way that I loved doing it. I, I, I loved training my style and, and challenging it against Flex and against Chris uh, in the gym because their styles were totally different. I was much more faster pace, uh, drop set, super set, high reps, and wearing those guys out. And they liked that too because it helped them get in shape. But when it started getting to the heavy poundages, uh, I was the first one to set the weight up so that they didn't have to take weight off the bar. I would go first and set the pace and I would never really train their style. They'd have to train my style, which I would win every time because they just didn't have the stamina for it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I've asked Ronnie this question. Um, the 98 Olympia to the 2003 Olympia were completely different looks for Ronnie. Which, yeah. I mean, Ronnie at 247 in 98 or 287 or 289 in 2003, which do you think was a, was a preferable look? Well, my all-time favorite Ronnie Coleman athletic look was the 2001 Arnold Classic. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So you, you could look at the pictures and argue the lighting might not have been the best, but for me, Ronnie looked like an athlete. Like he, after the show, he looked like he could put on some shoulder pads and go play a football game, <laughs> or he could put on spandex, or he could put on spandex and go perform in a ballet. He looked, he looked like a track star. Uh, he looked like an athlete in 2001 at the Arnold Classic, and I say that because that was on my way to my final Olympia. And in my mind, it was already resonating in my head. I'm watching this guy here win the Arnold Classic thinking, holy shit, this is, he's at his best. I thought he was better than he was in 90, 98. Okay. For me, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, my, my, that. Yeah, my criteria is a little bit different, but I know, I know completeness when I see it. Um, some of the most complete pictures I've seen of Ronnie are some black and white photos taken by Per Bernal. We all know him. I think you had the yeah. back shot on, on muscular development. I'm not sure what yeah. year that was from, but, Oh, three. I mean, you? Okay. Oh, three. So those pictures made you look freaking phenomenal. And uh, those are iconic photographs. I think that was a cover shot, wasn't it? You were doing a back yeah. pose on, yeah. uh, which you, you rarely see a cover shot with a back pose. Yeah. Um, but in person, watching him actually move the agility, I think you might have even did the splits in one of your routines. But 2001 uh, Honor Classic. Yeah. 2001 Honor Classic. I think I 
that was the Ronnie Coleman physique that I personally liked. Other other years, you can find a flaw here or there, which is small, either a little bit too heavy in the midsection or a little light in the calves. Um, but in 01, it looked like everything was very uh, – it, it came into a certain synchronicity, as Peter McGough would say. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite has always been 98, Miss Olympia. Well, you're first. I'm, that's yeah. listen, you, you only hit that peak one time in your life. Yeah, yeah. one time. That was ridiculous. One time in my life. And that's yeah, and it, and it was the most important ever. time. Yeah. I think and, you went uh, on to sign a, a five- or six-year uh, contract. Six-year contract with Weeder, yeah, right afterwards. So he, he saw something coming. Yeah. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> yeah, he saw something. I didn't see it, but, you know, uh, I was I was basically uh, just in bodybuilding for a free membership to the gym. Yeah, and that's, how it typically, to the gym. that's how it typically starts with great, you know, people that fall in love <laughs> with what they do. Yeah, because uh, I had a ton of passion for it, ton. Mm-hmm. I look forward to going to gym every single day. And Who was your training partner? Who was your train? Did you go through a bunch of training partners or no? No, no, no. I had yeah. Vicky as my training partner uh, when we were together, and then uh, uh, Brian, you know, Dobson, who, yeah. who started me, and then I trained with Gus Gus Carter. Yeah, I remember Gus. Uh, yeah, a few years. Yeah, yeah. That I, was I think it. back. Yeah, I think back in the days, it's like you have a couple of guys that are. I didn't call them training partners. They were for me. They were punching bags. Like I try to beat up on them, they try to beat up on me. And uh, depending on where we were at, you know, it's like it's going to be a fight when we get there. We already know it. But yeah, I didn't want to get. I didn't like to get comfortable with the same guy all the time. You know, I like to get in a fight at the gym. Yeah. Well, after uh, after Vicky, uh, Vicky broke up. It was just me by myself. Yeah. So no, nobody trained with me. It was just me. You know? And that's the way yeah. I really rather have it, you know. Yeah. So you can't depend on nobody but yourself. These yeah. other guys, they gonna be here one day, next day they gotta work, uh or some 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 something always comes up. And you can't right. count on that. Well I, I think at some point in I think at off. some point in all of I think in all of our careers at some point you realize like like this is your job. This is what you're choosing to do. Yeah. And uh, other people will let you down all the time because it's not their every time. Every time, yeah, exactly. It's not their job. It's not their dream. It's not their goal. And they got, they got all these excuses, and they'll let you down if you rely on them. Yep, exactly. I didn't, I didn't give, I didn't give people that opportunity. The best training part I, I, I ever had was Vicky, Vicky Gates. Uh huh. And she was that showed all, in her physique. Yeah, never missed a day. Never complained. Always there. And to her credit, I think she did. Didn't she do like thirteen Olympias and Arnold Classics too? Yeah, she won five on all. Classic. Yeah. Mr. So she, she, she had that in her. She, she she had the same ambition, which helps, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. She played second in Olympia three times, you know. She yeah. couldn't beat Kim, you know. Nobody could beat yeah. Kim. <laughs> Kim was Sean, Sean, what was your reaction? Sorry, there's a bit of noise in the background there. Sean, what was your reaction when you saw Ronnie at 2003? Because you would have been there as press, correct? In the I was back. I wasn't in the audience. I was backstage uh, with the microphone. I was working for um, a company out of Australia, uh, Wayne Galosh's company. I forget it was VH something. GM, GMV. Uh, GMV. 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 Yeah, I was working with GMV. So I was doing interviews. Oh, fantastic! Uh, and of course, uh, you, you were you weren't standing next to Ronnie. You were standing around Ronnie. I mean, Ronnie was <laughs> ridiculously, ridiculously big. It was like the Hindenburg or the Goodyear blimp. He was just a monster. Um, and it's different because, you know, we're usually at our smallest when we're backstage. When we're on stage, we're at our absolute lightest weight of the year. So he dieted down to look like that, <laughs> which gives you even more appreciation for the girth that he holds, right? Because most of these bodybuilders, they, they shrink down. Ronnie didn't look like he was even on a diet. Like, he looked, you know, just so much bigger than the competition. And and I think I was talking in those those uh, those terms because it's one thing standing on stage next to a guy. It's another thing when you're in your street clothes and you're watching him warm up and you're watching him actually move. And you and you see the chunk, the traps, the chunks that are like they look like pieces of clay stuck on top of his shoulders. And it just looks like slabs of beef. And, uh, yeah, he, he was very Jurassic looking. Uh, it didn't look it didn't look re- it didn't look real. Yeah, that's yeah. It went crazy in the in the gym training, so mm-hmm. they were trying to uh, take it from me uh, so, somehow or another. 
uh, Gunther, Gunther beat me, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, they want to go to well, he war. Beat, he beat you in 02, after 02 Olympia. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I'm like, okay, they want to they wanna go to war now. So I'm going to take them to war. And I went to the gym every single day with that attitude. And I had an attitude in the gym every single day. And I trained crazy. Ronnie. Real crazy. Ronnie, looking back now that happened, are you glad that happened at the GNC Show of Strength? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the best things ever happened. Yeah. Of course, I didn't think of it at the time, you know. I'm like, man, somebody beat me? I, I yeah, I was there. Uh, well, I was there. I saw this Kevin supposed to happen. Kevin ran off the, uh, out of the crowd and jumped into Gunther's arms like he had no, just won the lottery. Him up. He picked yeah, him, picked up. him up. Like, he, like he's the uh, like he's Miss Olympia. <laughs> well, I, I think what it, I, I think what it was his 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 happiness was the fact that there's a chink he in the armor. Some, he did something there he could do. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, did I lose you guys. Sorry, <laughs> I can't <Okay>. see. <laughs> just got a nice shot. Your abs there. Um, no, so, so yeah, someone called in. Okay. So what it was, Ronnie, is that suddenly Kevin was second to you in 2002. Yeah. So yeah. so so now Gunther beats you, and now Kevin in his mind is thinking we got him now like we yep. got him like you're you you've been beaten and now there's no coming back from that and i think his his jubilation was like in 2003 he's going to come back and he's going to beat you but kevin was done after 2002 sean Ke but sean, sean, sean 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 sorry we can't see you mate sorry they keep press the camera on you can't see me yeah we what? can just see your abs from 98 <laughs> there <laughs> yeah. we go <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. so but you could you could hear me right yes you hear me? we yeah, heard that yeah, yeah we heard that yeah so, Correct. After Kevin got second in 2002, and he went on to, to watch uh, Gunther beat you in, in, I think it was Louisiana. I was there too. Yeah, New Orleans. Um, he, yeah, he, so he thought he was next. And, yeah. at the, at the, and the truth of the matter is, Kevin was done at the, in 2002. He had knee issues. His legs were kind of slight. But um, it was something to witness because we just never thought it was going to happen that you were actually going to get beat. I didn't believe you were going to get beat. And you went on to win, what, 2003, 2004, 2005? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, in my mind, I was I was comfortably retired. I didn't give a crap who won, but I just like it's like <laughs> it's gonna t it's gonna take a Ronnie Coleman to beat a Ronnie Coleman. I just I didn't know that it would come in the form of Jay Cutler, who I thought was a little bit too boxy. But after yeah. Jay, I I don't remember. I don't know who was challenging Jay. There was no one there. Flex was Flex was done. Kevin was done. Chris Cormier was done. So the guys I thought would actually be next, they were all gone, and then it was just you and Jay left. Yeah, and then uh, Dexter came out of nowhere and beat Jay. Yeah, and, and we were yeah no we were all chill, but I was so comfortable in retirement by that time like I could only be happy for for Dexter because it looked like me right yeah yeah that's what I'm saying yeah you went the Olympia style yeah yeah that, and Dexter that actually said that a little that. guy could be a big guy yeah and you know we just kind of thought from that moment on there might be a couple of different looks in bodybuilding and uh, yeah unfortunately unfortunately the Olympia being what it is you know yeah, Jay came back to one end and then. Got and then Phil Heath ran off with seven. Yeah. And now we're in a different era.